Hello everyone, today I'm going to solve problem 10 of chapter 6. Determine the force in each member of the truss and state if the members are in tension or compression. Set P1 6 kN and P2 9 kN. So we have the external load acting on our truss. Because we want to find all the forces in the members, uh, we need to analyze multiple joints. We are going to use method of joints, so we have to select joints that only have two unknown forces. Because using method of joints, we can only solve for two unknowns. Since we have two equilibrium equations, summation of forces in x and summation of forces in y equals zero. We do not have any moment equation in method of joints because we do not have any dimension. Our joints are particles. So looking at the problem, if you want to start by joint B, we have three unknowns, joint C, three unknowns, joint E, we have four unknowns, but joint D and A, we have three unknowns, but one of the unknowns are the reaction forces. So if I find the reaction forces, then I can actually find, start with these joints. So if you want to find the reaction force, uh, I take a moment, uh, about point A, I assume counterclockwise to be positive, dy is going to create a positive moment, P2 and P1 are going to create negative moments. So P1 negative moments would be magnitude 6, moment arm 4, P2 magnitude 9, moment arm 8, and dy that I don't have would be 12, equal 0. So I find dy to be 8 kN. I can write summation of moment about point D this time and find ay or I can simply write summation of forces in y. So I have ay minus 6 minus 9 plus dy that I already found. So I can find ay to be 7 kN. These are the two reaction forces. I mean, technically, we have a reaction force here, AX, but it's obvious because we don't have any forces in X direction that the reaction would be zero. But we can also write it, AX would be zero. Now that I have the two reaction forces, I can start by joint A or joint D because I only have two unknown forces. So let's start by joint A. So joint A. I'm going to draw the free wire diagram of joint A. So joint A, I know at least one force, that's AY, that I already found to be 7 kN. Then I have two other forces that are acting on uh, joint A. I have the force AE that could be either... The force AE can be, can, can be either towards... E or on the opposite side. But because I know that's 7 kN, so it has to go downward to cancel that, that force. The other force would be force AB, member AB, that could be either on this side or on the other side. But if you look at the free body diagram, you know something needs to cancel this force that is to the left. So this has to be to the right. So this force would be FAB. I, this is my coordinate, x and y. So this force, I'm going to call this FAB. And this force FAE. I need to find the angles. AB is in x direction, 7 kN in y direction. FAE, if I go to my geometry, my truss, I know that this one is halfway here. So this is 6. The height is 6, so this is 6, 6, uh, and 6 square 2. So this is the triangle that I have, which is equivalent to a similar triangle of 1, 1 square root of 2. So that's what I'm going to use uh, here. 1, 1 square root of 2. So summation of forces in y, I would have one unknown. So summation of forces in y equals zero. I have my seven kN minus FAE one over square root of two equals zero. 
that gives me FAE to be 7 square root of 2 kilonewton. So whether the member is in tension or compression, we have to see whether it's going towards the member or away from the member. Our member is going to be somewhere here. So that force is going away from the member. So that is in compression. So I put a sign C here. Then I can write summation of forces in Y. Remember, in method of joints, we do not have any moment equation. So summation of forces in X, I have FAB. I have negative FAE that I already found. The magnitude is 7 square root of 2, but I need to find a horizontal component, which is 1 over a square root of 2. Therefore, FAB would be 7 kN. And FAB is towards the member. My member would be somewhere here. So it's towards the member, so that it is in tension. So we found two of the unknown forces. Now we can move to the other joint and find other. Let's go to joint D. That's another joint with only two forces. Now that I found uh, the value for FAB and FAE, I could move to other joints as well, but joint D seems to be uh, a simpler joint. I have my fourth reaction force which is 8 kN and I have uh, FAE and uh, FDC and FED so FED could be either in this direction or in the opposite direction but something 8 kN is going upward so something has to cancel that that's why that would be the value of FA, FED should be going downwards. And then also I have FDC. FDC could be in this direction or it could be in this direction, depending whether it's in tension or compression. But it has to be in, to the left, so it cancels my force FED. Uh, so I have FED here. Uh, and I'll have FDC. And my coordinate, I choose a typical XY coordinate. Similarly, I have summation of forces in X and Y. If I write summation of forces in Y, I have only one unknown. So I start with summation of forces in Y equals zero. And uh, FED, again, similarly, is a triangle of one, one square root of two. So I have positive eight minus FED. 1 over a square root of 2 equals 0. Therefore, FED would be 8 square root of 2. And because it's uh, going away from the member, the value would be compression. Now I write summation of forces in X equals 0. I have FED that I know the magnitude is 8 square root of 2. I want to find the horizontal component, so 1 over the square root of 2 minus FDC equals 0. So FDC would be 8 kN. And it's going towards the member, so it would be in tension. Whether it's going towards the member or away the member, you need to know where the member is. If it's the joint D, my member is here. FED, I have a member here. So for this case, it's going away from the member. For this case, it's going towards the member. That's why this one is in compression and this one is in tension. So now I found two other unknown values. So I have to go uh, and start analyzing other joints to find the other unknowns. I can move to joint B. So I have showing you the image again so we know which joint we are talking about so this is joint b for joint b i have the value of p1 already i have member a b so i have this one as well so the only two unknown would be bc and b so i can analyze this joint so joint b 
one is six kilonewton. That's the problem. That's the external uh, force that the problem has given us. So the value for that would be six kilonewton. We know the magnitude and we know the direction. The other force is FBE. So it could be either in this direction or in the opposite direction. But something has to cancel that six kilonewton. So this one should go towards uh, high value. F a, B, we know the members is in tension. We already found that. And we know the direction and the magnitude. So this is F, A, B. We know it should be in this direction. Because the member is in tension, so it should be towards the member. And then uh, F, B, C, we have the choice of on one side to the right or to the left. And it's not really clear which one is going to be because we have forces in both directions. So we can assume one direction. If you find a negative value, that means that the direction that we assumed is incorrect. So this is 6 kN. This is force FAB the, that we already found. 7 kN. This is FBC. And this is FBE. Going from B to E. And then the dimensions here is four, six, so we are dealing with four, six, or we can use a similar triangle of two, three. Uh, that, that would give us the same thing. Uh, sorry, that's, uh, this is half of that, so that would be two, three, yeah, 2, 6, and that would be 1, 3. So that would be a square root of 10. So that's a triangle that, that we deal with for B. So 1, 3, a square root of 10. If I write summation of forces, in y equals 0, I have FBE. 3 over a square root of 10. And the other only force that I have is 6 kN. So I can find FBE to be 2 square root of 10 kilonewton because it's towards the member that would be in uh, tension. I write summation of forces in X. I have FBC minus 7. Also, I have the component of uh, FBE. I, I know the magnitude is 2 times the square root of 10, and then times the horizontal component. If I want to find the horizontal component, the magnitude would be times 1 square root of 10. You, you have noticed that I keep these square roots because that makes it simpler, because they cancel each other, and I don't lose accuracy for uh, writing in a, in a decimal point. So equal 0, that gives me f bc to be 5 kN. So the value that I find is positive, so the direction that I assumed is correct. And if you remember, if you look at this, uh, the image here at B, let me erase here, here at E, B, FBC, the, the force is towards the member. The member is here. So that's why FBC is in tension. So we found the other two unknown as well. So now if we analyze joint C, we can find the only unknown, which is FCE. This is my joint. 9 kN is external force. I have FDC that I already found to be 8 kN. FBC, we know the value for this one as well, both value and direction. Also, we have the only unknown would be FCE which we have 1, 3, a square root of 10 for the dimensions. So here, if I write summation of forces in uh, Y, I will give, I get the answer. So I don't even, even need to write summation of forces in X direction. Therefore, 3 over a square root of 10, F, FCE gives me uh, the vertical component, the, the only other force that I have is that 9 kN, so FCE 
would be 3 square root of 10. And the value would be in tension because my member would be here. So that would be towards the member. I can write summation of forces in X as well to check the answer to see whether actually that satisfies this equation. But you do not need to write that because we found all the forces in all the members. So by analyzing joint C, joint B, joint D and A, so four joints, we could find all the forces in, in all the members.